Screen Directors Playhouse, stars Robert Cummings, Julia Adams, production Stairway to Heaven, directors Emmerich Pressburger and Michael Powell. This is the Screen Directors Playhouse. One of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from the pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we take extreme pleasure in introducing to you the president of the Screen Directors Guild and the eminent creator of motion pictures, Mr. George Sidney. Thank you. Tonight, the Screen Directors Playhouse is pleased to present, transcribed, a tale as universally enjoyable as, well, the universe... Here in Hollywood, we're really proud of our motion pictures, but we know that not all the best come from our own sound stages. Over in England, two gentlemen named Emmerich Pressburger and Michael Powell, have, well, they've been entertaining us with the movies they write, produce, and direct. One of these is the remarkably strange and beautiful love story entitled Stairway to Heaven. And tonight, as you hear it, starring Robert Cummings and Julia Adams, we hope you'll add it to your list of screen directors' playhouse favorites. Before we begin, here's Jimmy Wallington. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. And now let's drop in on Bob Hope and High Everback and see what the boys are cooking up for vacations. By the way, High, where are you going to spend your vacation? Well, I'm a nature lover, Bob. I've got a beautiful spot picked out. Any direction I look, all I can see is green. Yeah, how do you get into Crosby's vault? Well, speaking of money, friends, when you've saved up for a big summer weekend or vacation, you want to make every minute count. You like to go where you want, do what you want. So take along the cigarette that gives you what you want, Chesterfield. Chesterfields give you mildness. Over 1,500 tobacco growers tell you that Chesterfield's milder aroma means a milder smoke. And the country's first and only cigarette taste panel found that of all brands tested, only Chesterfield leaves no unpleasant aftertaste. Mildness plus no unpleasant aftertaste. That's the biggest plus in cigarette history. So slip a couple of cartons of Chesterfields in that vacation suitcase. Remember the words of Bob Chesterfield Hope. Whether you go by plane, train, or bus, take the cigarette with mildness plus. I mean Chesterfield. Now the first act of the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of Stairway to Heaven. Starring Robert Cummings as Peter and Julia Adams as June. This is a story of heaven and earth. In between is the universe. And that's where you are now. Listen to it. Timeless, endless. Galaxies, suns, stars. Millions of them. There, a violent burst of light as something explodes... Probably a world blown to bits. And here, another planet torn by its own fevers. The planet Earth exploding in the year 1945. <laughs> 1945, a thousand bomber raid by the RAF. 
Night and a burning city. That was an hour ago. Circus 7 to Jolly Roger. Circus 7 calling Jolly Roger. Do you read? Do you receive? Now the smoke swirls. No longer smoke, but an English fog. And a flaming Lancaster bomber hurtles through the English night. Hello, G. George. Tower calling G. George. Where are you? What is your position? Hello, this is G. George. Position halfway between heaven and earth. Repeat heaven, repeat earth. I like to repeat earth. Do it all over again. I say, what is your name? June. Oh, please. What is your heading? I don't know yet. Uh, what do you think the next world's like? Oh, incidentally, my name's Peter Carter. Can you land, Peter? Can you land? I think heaven starts where this leaves off, don't you? Uh, no, June, I can't land. Ten tenths fog, instruments gone, landing gear gone. Inner port on fire, inner starboard conked out, crew bailed out, all but my wireless operator, he's dead. Got that? Hello, hello. Yes, Peter. Are you bailing out? Yes, June, I'm bailing out, all right. But there's a bit of a catch. I've got no parachute. Peter, perhaps we can do something. What is your position? Can't do anything, my dearest. Parachute cut to ribbons. Might as well jump as fly. Oh, look, I uh, hope I haven't frightened you. I'm not frightened. Good. Uh, talk to me for a while. You're an American, aren't you? Uh, where were you born? Boston. Oh, Boston. Never been to Boston. You sound like a nice girl. Are you uh, good looking? Not bad. For a whack. June, are you in love with anybody? Why, well, I, I could be. I am. I love you. Your life, and I'm leaving you. That can't be helped about the parachute. But, oh, Peter, your position. Just a little closer to heaven than before. Goodbye, June. Getting warm up here. I'm going to jump. Oh, incidentally, they say the first thousand feet are the hardest. Goodbye, my darling. Oh, Peter, th there must be some... After the mixed pleasures of Earth, I imagine you're quite ready to return to the universe. Peaceful, isn't it? Taking away quite merrily. Incidentally, you're not traveling alone. There are others with you. Airmen, all of them. Chaps who this night pass in the twinkling of an eye from Earth to... Well, it certainly sounds like heaven. section report here air crew section report here please yeah we got caught on their searchlights at a thousand feet i thought we were dead but we are old boy so this is heaven huh i bet they got another one upstairs for commissioned officers <laughs> gentlemen gentlemen you're the new arrivals to the air crew section Please check in at desk number eight. Uh, excuse me, section officer, but if this is heaven, where are our wings? Wings parade follows an appropriate training period. Hey, if this is heaven, where's the coke machine? <laughs> After you check in, Sergeant. Now, if you'll all just move to your left. Oh, uh, I say. Yes, flying officer? Name's Bob Trubshaw. Wireless up on G for George. I've just added. Can I help you? Right. Where's Peter. Peter? The skipper. Squadron leader Peter Carter. He just had it too. If he's due, Flying Officer Trubshaw, he's here. Ruddy well due right now. Jump without a shoot. Can't be more ruddy due than that, can he? Hmm. Well, uh, let me see. Squadron leader Carter. Peter. Oh, yes, he's on the list. He's here all right. Sorry. Pardon? Not here. Impossible. Quite, but still not here. Flying Officer Trubshaw, if the records don't balance, the alarm bells ring, and I assure you they're not ringing. Now, if you'll excuse me, the conductor is checking in. Conductor 71 reporting, madam. Very well. Uh -uh. Not very well. All present and accounted for? All except one. Well, how did you know? What? Oh, I knew it. This frilled-up Frenchman has ready well gone and lost me skipper. And who would not in your cursed English fog, eh? And whom did you lose? The squadron leader, Peter Carter. Oh. Ever since my, uh, <clears throat> my neck operation during the so-called glorious French Revolution, I had not taken well to fog. And there was fog over the coast. <gasps> but it is such fog. It was impossible. Well, I can't believe it. Well, you can ruddy well believe it now. There go the alarm bells. Oh. 
Well. Oh, good heavens. Heaven? Hmm. Water. <laughs> I never thought they'd build a beach around it. Oh, and seagulls, too. Oh, my head aches. Now, you wouldn't think they'd let a chap lie in the sand getting all damp like this. Very rude. Hello. Hello there. Now, let me see. Legs. Hips. And red lips. And an American uniform. Well, that does it. It certainly can't be heaven. No, on second thought, it could be. What did you say? You know, I, I say I'm alive. Are you all right? I, I saw you lying on the beach, half in the water, and I... You, you, you're... You're June. What? You're Peter. Hello. How, how did you... Oh, oh no, no, no. Don't, don't start crying. I, I shouldn't, should I? No, no. Laugh, rather, like in Boston. We don't laugh in Boston. We smile. Oh. Oh, Peter, what happened? How did you get here? Well, I, I don't really know. Uh... You're not hurt? Well, my head feels a bit weird. I say, uh, I didn't have a parachute, did I? Well, last night you, you said that No, you... no, no, darling. Please don't cry. Peter. Darling. I'm alive, Joe. It's a great and wonderful thing to be alive. Heaven. Hm. A fine ruddy station this is. Can't keep the ruddy personnel straight. Flying officer Troopshaw, a complete ruddy report is being prepared. Peter kicked the bucket 36 hours ago and he's still messing around down there. It's <laughs> ruddy and decent. Oh dear, not in England. Now, if he were messing around in France. Ooh la la. <laughs> oh dear. Dear, why must they use that hard American signal system? I must report to the section officer. You will excuse me. Silly nonsense. We are just as ooh la la as you are. <laughs> Conductor 71, we have our information of squadron leader Peter Carter. I trust no irreparable damage has been done. I trust you've made a fine muddle of it. Peter Carter has gone ahead and fallen in love. Ah. It complicates things. Oui, madame. And you're going to jolly well uncomplicate it. Oui, madame. You'll proceed to Earth immediately. Oui, madame. You'll explain your grave error to squadron leader Carter and bring him back. Oui, madame. Is he uh, reasonable? He's an Englishman. Unreasonable. <laughs> You'll find him with the young lady in a meadow outside her air station. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Two people in love. Please remember, Conductor 71, you're no longer a Frenchman. Perhaps no longer a man, madame, but French for eternity, bonjour. Heavenly, isn't it, Peter? You certainly are. <laughs> oh, I mean the birds and the sun. And... <sighs> I'm sleepy. Can't even open my eyes. Here. Yeah. Use my jacket for a pillow. I'll unfold it. Oh, you know, I, I wish I had a power. I wish I could make time stand still. Uh-huh. I have the power, Peter. What? Well, who are you? I not only have it, I exercise it. Time is standing still. Uh, June, June, darling, wake up. No, 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 no. She cannot. We are talking in space, not time. After all, what is time? A mere tyranny. As uh, Benjamin Franklin is always saying... Uh, Be Benjamin Franklin? You see here, what do you want? You. Hey, come along. I'll take you to your wily separator. Bob? Well, Why, well, he's dead. Oh, yes, quite, quite dead. And doing very well. And now you are 36 hours overdue at the reception center. If Bob is dead, then I... Oh, no. No, no. My dear friend, oh, yes. Oh, this is... <laughs> this is simply fantastic. Uh, June, June. <laughs> she can't hear you. And really, is it any more fantastic than a man who jumps from a plane of 7,040 feet without a parachute and then uh, makes love to an American? Eh? Eh, she's quite exquisite. Yes, I, I love her. Oh, yes, it's quite a scandal up there. Come along, I'll tell you about it. No. No? No. 
Stop, you can't say no. And who says I can't? The whole uh, Ruddy universe. Now, let me tell... Ruddy? We... Well, you, you've seen Bob all right. Look, um... <laughs> tell you what, j- just pip off and give him my love, will you? Oh, Peter. Peter, because I lost you in the fog, you have overstayed your time by 36 hours. The advantage is exclusively yours. You lost nothing. You only gained... Be reasonable, huh? Me be reasonable. Now, there I was, ready to die, waiting for you to say the word. And then you went and bunged things up. And now I've fallen in love because of your mistake. And, and you want me to be reasonable. Oh. You are going to be difficult. I am. And if you don't dash quick, leave me alone, I'm going to dash well kick you back into paradise. No, no, no. Please, please. No violence. Nothing can be done. You are 36 hours overdue. Nothing can be done. What kind of government do you represent, anyway? I am not permitted to discuss politics. Well, if it's a respectable place... My then... dear Peter, if heaven is nothing else, it is respectable. Then there must be a law of appeal. Are you coming with me or are you not? No, I'm not coming. Well, in that case... Well? Uh, I shall report the application for an appeal. Oh, well, that's the ticket. And until I return, I warn you, Peter, do not fall any deeper in love. It would be very easy, but... Possibly very sad. Au revoir, madame. Oh, no, thank you, darling. What? No, thank you. I, I don't need your coat for a pillow. You just asked me. June, open your eyes. Didn't you hear us talking? Who? Well, that Frenchman and I, we, we were... Oh, June, an odd thing happened while you were asleep. I wasn't asleep, dear. They, they sent some... Oh. What oh. is it, Peter? Your head again? Yes, I, I think it's getting worse. Why, Peter? What happened? Well, they... They sent somebody from the, the place where I would have gone... Well, the place where I should have gone when I jumped from the plane. Peter. Peter. June. Why aren't I dead? How did I live? I don't know, darling. I, I just know you were saved. I'm going to appeal, June. I've got a chance. Oh, oh my head. June. June, I, I can't see you. I'm here, my darling. Oh, yes. Of course I'm here. Oh, June, for a second, it was like the fog again. Everything was gone. No, Peter. June, I thought I'd lost you. The next time you suffer from pains of a headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing anison tablets from their own dentist or physician. And in this way, discovered the incredibly fast relief anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, take anison for this wonderfully fast relief. Anison. A-N-A-C-I-N. Anison comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30. Economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anison at any drug counter. Now the second act of the screen director's playhouse presentation of Stairway to Heaven, starring Robert Cummings and Julia Adams. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the only thing standing between you and eternity has been one commercial announcement. Having dispensed with this, you are now in heaven.
Flying over the troop shore, I am very sad to say that your friend Peter refuses to come to heaven. Oh. Well, can't very well blame him, you know. After those two girls in London, he expected the other place. <laughs> Did we not all? You know, I'm getting ruddy tired of sitting on this heavenly staircase. But we must wait. I have submitted the question of Peter's appeal. Can't we go somewhere else for a change? No, no, but the stairway can. Oh, well, rev up and let's take off. Very well. Blimey, a ruddy escalator. And down we go. There, do you see it? What? Earth, to the left of Venus and the right of Mars. Between Venus and Mars? Love and war. Always between love and war. And Peter's in love. He says so. If the skipper says so, he is. When does he get word on his appeal? Well, I don't know. The selection board is considering. We've stopped. Regulations. Unofficial personnel not allowed below this level. Too bad. Hope that ever squinted Peter and this girl of his. Oh, and what a shame. He's so close at this moment. Looks a ruddy way off to me. My dear flying officer, he is kissing his June. And after all, I'm much closer to heaven can a man be. so happy. They've been hiding it from me. Who's they? Well, the people who run the universe. I've been cheated of the past. And we've been given a future. Uh, that remains to be seen. Oh, Peter, the motorcycle. It must be flat. Right? Dr. Reed, the neurologist I told you about. You wait here and make yourself beautiful for me. No, you can take me as I am. What home, my lovely? I came like the wind. Yes, and someday you're going to kill yourself with that motorcycle. Well, all the better. You love another man. Oh, Frank, I do indeed. Good. That'll be the making of you. Where is he? Inside, waiting for you. Did you make the arrangements? Yes, all cleared with his CO and squadron medical officer. He'll be in my hands. I'm thankful for that. Our base MO says what you don't know about neurology would fill... Several the... thousand volumes. I'm a good guesser, that's all. Perhaps that's all he needs. Perhaps, from what you've told me. Now, let's meet the patient. Ah, the doctor comes swept in mystery. Peter, darling, this is Frank. Oh, hello, Frank. Hello, Peter, darling. <laughs> You're a lucky man. Oh, really lucky? Yes, you've got June. Oh, yes. yes. I also have a headache and some pretty unexplainable experiences. Well, we'll see about those. You mind answering some questions? He's a whiz. Okay, fire away. Um, age, about 29? No, 27. You never had any hallucinations before? Never. What uh, what were you in civilian life? Oxford. Specializing? History. Good. I'm interested. We'll have to have a talk one day. You can come for dinner after we're married. Oh, we have to get you married then. Well, I have to win my appeal, too. Oh, yes, the uh, Frenchman. We'll get to that. Um, Peter, why haven't you told your M.O. about those headaches? Oh, I don't know, because... Say, so how did you know I've been having them right along? That's a guess. How long? Oh, about six months. Peter, I, I thought it was just since the other night. They're worse now, are they? Yes. And where do they hurt most? Uh, well, here and here. Mm-hmm. Frontal and temporal. Uh, you ever have a nasty crack on the head? No, just the usual. Do, do you mind if I try something with your eyes? <laughs> well, just as long as you give them back. <laughs> Good. So now you look straight ahead and don't move your eyes. Check. What are you looking at? June's legs. I'll move. You do, and I'll scream. No. Now, without shifting your vision, what can you see on the extreme right? Uh, fireplace. Uh -huh. Center? Legs. Extreme left? Uh, windows. Curtains? Yes. Color? Uh, red. Right. That'll do. Can I move now? You can move over here. One last question, Peter. Have you imagined recently that you smelled something that couldn't possibly be there? What? Why, that's an extraordinary thing. Have you? 
Yes. Peter, you didn't tell me. Well, it, it, it was just too silly. I... No, it's important. It might explain everything. You mean how I jump without a parachute and live? No. Not that. Now, uh, you saw this Frenchman, this heavenly messenger, quite clearly. Like I see June. And this smell, it came at the same time? Yes, very strongly. Could you place it? Fried onions. <laughs> Fried onions? Unmistakably? Unmistakably. And this messenger, will he return? Oh, yes, yes. He's, he's to bring me word on my appeal, you see. Yes, about that, Peter. Don't give in. Don't let anybody talk you into anything. You're entitled to an appeal, and you're going to fight for it. Right, I, I'm a fighting fool. <laughs> now, I'm going to leave you for a little while, but this afternoon, Peter, you're going to move into my house. Oh, uh, you mean observation and all that? Mm -hmm, X-rays and things. Also, I like June around, and she's going to help us. We'll be there. Well, then, goodbye, and don't worry. I'm a devil of a good doctor. Hmm. Well, quite a man, your Frank. Only, uh... Only what, Peter? My appeal. I just have a feeling it's not a good doctor that I need. It's a good lawyer. Now, here's a word from RCA Victor. You can expect top performance from every RCA Victor television set. You can enjoy perfect performance at all times for years to come with an RCA Victor factory service contract. You see, as the owner of an RCA Victor television set, you can enjoy protection with the RCA Victor factory service contract. You're always sure to receive prompt, courteous, and expert service by RCA's own factory-trained technicians. And the result? Hours and hours of uninterrupted pleasure. No unnecessary expenses for repairs or parts. Remember, this service is available with or without a contract only to RCA Victor television owners. Attention, electronic engineers. Right now, RCA has career openings for experienced engineers. If you're a qualified radio electronics engineer... RCA offers you lifelong opportunities. Just send a complete resume of your education and experience to Radio Corporation of America, Box 1, RCA Building, Radio City, New York. Your resume will be kept confidential. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Always milder, better tasting, cooler smoking, plus no unpleasant aftertaste. And that's the biggest plus in cigarette history. By the makers of Anison for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, First in television. Screen Director's Playhouse, starring Robert Cummings and Julia Adams, will continue in just a moment after a brief pause for station identification. This is the Screen Director's Playhouse. We continue transcribed with the third act of Stairway to Heaven, starring Robert Cummings as Peter and Julia Adams as June. Having paused for station identification, we now rejoin the universe. 
Enter then upon the solar system, Earth, England, the cottage of Dr. Frank Reed, a sleeping man, two speaking people. Oh, Frank, look at him. It's the first real rest Peter's had since, since the plane. I gave him a tablet, June. He'll sleep another two hours. How do you know? I know my patient. Come on, I'll give you a game of table tennis. Frank, what about the hallucinations? Will he have more? Yes. How can you be so sure? Because your Peter said the Frenchman, this heavenly messenger, promised to return. Now, what about our game of ping pong? Frank, without being very technical, can you tell me what's wrong with Peter? He's not going mad. No, not the way you mean, but his brain is being affected, yes. I found out a great deal, June, when I asked him about his sense of smell. But what did it mean, that that odor of fried onions he talked about? Well, Peter is having a series of highly organized hallucinations. A combination of vision, of hearing, and of idea. Now, to a neurologist, that points to a direct connection with the sense of smell or taste. And once that connection is established... Uh... Ah, now, see here, June, I'm not going to tell you any more, and I want my game of table tennis. Frank. Mm-hmm? How did he survive the jump from the plane? I don't know. No, none of us do. Well, come on, I, I'll beat you with that game. Yes, we'll leave his door open just in case. All right, then. Prepare for a drubbing. Rally for serve. All right. <laughs> oh, good return. Here we go. Oh, oh, oh look out. You'll take the spot. Hmm. Fried onions. Hmm? <laughs> French fried onions. Eh bien, mon cher Peter, wake up, wake up. Ah, so you've come back. Oui, huh? oui, comment ça va? Frank, June, he's here, Frank. No, 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 it's no use. You know me and my tricks. Oh, oh, so you've gone and stopped time again. Huh? <laughs> right in the middle of a splendid forehand by your young lady. I'd like to give you a splendid backhand right in the middle please, of your... Please, 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 please. <laughs> Peter, you've already caused me one promotion and two merit badges. Really? But if they're blaming you, that means... My appeal, huh? Unhappily, I have the honor to inform you that you are to be allowed an appeal before the High Court. Oh, wonderful. In 24 hours. Well, not much time, but I've got a chance. Don't be too optimistic. Why not? Because the prosecution counsel will be. Well, who will it be? Oh, steal yourself, mon ami. Abraham Jones. Who? Abraham Jones, 1775. I never heard of him. Never? Never. He lived in Boston. An American? Disgustingly American. <laughs> Abraham Jones died in Boston in 1775, the first American to die by a British bullet. He took it very seriously. <laughs> right between the eyes. Oh, and, and he's the uh, prosecuting counsel. Huh? Representing the Department of Records. <laughs> Sounds as if he might be just a wee bit prejudiced. Oh, sh- <laughs> you must never say that of an American. Well, if he isn't prejudiced, what is he? Just uh, hates your guts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but but why me? Why is he? Hate- oh no 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 no! Not just you. That's why he is not prejudiced. He hates all Englishmen impartially. <laughs> And particularly, he hates this little affair with a Boston bone girl. Uh, it's not just a little affair. Woo-hoo, big affair. He will hate you even more. <laughs> well, look, no Yankee out of eternity is going to spoil my chances with June. Exactly. What you have to do is choose a good defense counsel. Well, who? Well, anybody who has ever lived. All right, who, for instance? Well, he... me, for instance. I'd as soon start walking up the stairway to heaven right now. Uh, that, uh, that stairway, it's mechanized, you know. You must join me for a little ride on it soon, eh? Oh, no fear of that. Now, look here. I've got to get myself a defense counsel, and the point is, whom shall it be? Well, don't think too long, Chef Peter. Abraham Jones is already preparing his case, and only 24 hours remain. Oh, I'll find somebody. I, I, I have to be sure. I, I have to be... But hurry, Peter, hurry. Yes, yes, I'll, I'll hurry. Your time, like me, is slipping away. Away. Until next time, Peter. <laughs> Oh, so I am. June, Frank. Peter. What is it, darling? Oh, he, he was here, the, the Frenchman. Well, at least he didn't drop in unexpectedly. 
Frank, they're going to allow my appeal. Well, then they won't make you go away. Oh, I, I don't know, June. I don't know. I hope you didn't give in to anything. No, but, but I have to find a defense counsel. The, the prosecution, oh, he's going to be hard. He's going to be awfully hard. When's your appeal to be? Tomorrow night. I haven't got much time. It's running out. You've got tomorrow. And what you need right now is some rest. Tomorrow we'll map out a campaign. Oh, but look, I, I can't wait. Uh, look, look, I'm going to give you a little injection. It'll help you to sleep. Very important. Your mind has to be fresh for the appeal, right? Oh, yes, right. Good boy. I'll be back in a moment. Oh, June. Look, I, I, I don't know whom to choose. Oh, darling, we'll find somebody. Yes, but who? Who? Darling, if, I, if I made a mistake, if I choose the wrong man, I'll lose you. We can't lose each other, darling. Not now. The universe wouldn't stand for it. Oh, it. It didn't matter before. I didn't care. We all die, but now... Now it's unfair, oh, June. Please, unfair. Peter, try I'm to rest. I'll get Frank. So much to do, so much to do. Frank. Be right with you, June. I'm phoning. And Dr. McGowan, I know you're swamped, but you've got to find an operating theater for tomorrow night. Later might be too late. Frank. Hmm? Yes, yes, I'm certain. X-ray indicates a concussion about two years ago. Oh, you've seen the ocular reports. Everything points to arachnoid adhesions involving the olfactory nerve in the brain. No. No, it must be tomorrow night. This trial is set for then, and that's why it's a crisis. Yes, I... Yes, I'll be over as soon as I can. Mm-hmm. I bring you the complete notes. What? No. No, 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 doctor. You're, you're the surgeon I want for the job. Thank you. Goodbye. Frank, is it dangerous? Peter will survive the operation if he wins his case. And if the little Frenchman doesn't play any tricks on him. Now, uh, how is he? Excited and, and feverish. All right, I have the hypodermic. Let's put him to sleep. Here, Peter, I promised you a ride on the stairway. Here, just sit down the step. Hmm, well, it's a long stairway. No ending, no beginning. Oui, oui, it's like that, mon cher. Come on, sit down. No, we're, we're going up, we're moving. Uh, t -t -t Tell me, what about your defense counsel? Who shall it be? Huh? I don't know, I can't think. These stairs, uh, Clarence though. Darrow, perhaps, would you like? What? Oh, no, no, he was a criminal lawyer. Love isn't any crime. Well, uh, then a philosopher, a great philosopher, uh, uh, Plato, huh? Plato? You, you mean the Plato? <laughs> That's the chap. Yes, excellent man. He's been dead long enough to acquire a splendid reputation. <laughs> yes, but he had some pretty elementary ideas about love, you know. Oh, those Greeks, cold as their marble. Hey, what about a Frenchman, eh? Richelieu, irresistible at 80. What about a Richelieu? No, no, no. He frightened me in The Three Musketeers. <laughs> Well, then, Peter, who, who, who? Just, just, an, just a man, an ordinary man with a sense, uh, of sense of sentimentality and... Say, wait a minute. Oui? Why are you so concerned about my winning this case? <laughs> well, 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 I... The stairway, it's, it's still going up. You're trying to get me up there before my time. Oh, Peter, you don't trust me. I'm getting out. I'm going back before it's too late. Oh, Peter, come back. Come back, Peter. Come oh, get back. away. Get down Peter, the stairs. Only back. they're moving up. Come up. Back. Have to run faster. 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 <laughs> He, he almost got me. No, Peter. Yes, we, we were on a stairway going up, up. What's that noise? Just a thunderstorm, darling. You've slept a long time since last night. Last night? What time is it now? Six o'clock in the evening. Six o'clock. But my trial, it, it's only a few hours away, and I, I don't have any counsel. I, I don't have any case. Is he awake? Oh, Frank, yes, I'm awake. <laughs> it was touch and go for a minute. He... You almost fooled me. Don't be fooled, Peter. You need all your wits now. Don't be fooled. Frank, what are you dressed like that for? Leather jacket and goggles. It's the storm. I'm going on my motorbike for the ambulance. Ambulance? Yes, darling. You're, you're going to the hospital. Oh, but why? Well, there's a surgeon there who's going to perform a little operation. Okay? Is it necessary? Mm-hmm. It's a good idea. Okay, but I, I need somebody to state my case. An operation won't help you. You leave that to your doctor and don't worry. 
I'll think up a lawyer while I'm riding. Uh, n- nobody famous? Oh, no, 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 just common sense. Uh, an Englishman? Oh, as he'd have to be. Uh, nothing personal, June. Uh, if I pass the ambulance on the way, I'll go on to the hospital. They'll take care of Peter when they get here. I'll see you later. Oh, June, I'm, I'm terribly afraid. Who'll defend me? They might appoint some stooge. Not up there. You can count on a fair trial from them because... Because the surgeon's good and... And we do love each other. They, they must think of that. I suppose you're the girl. Yes, doctor. Please come out of the rain. The men are getting the stretch off. Peter's in there. Did you meet Dr. Reeve on the way? Oh, please hurry. Peter's worse. Uh, and... Miss. Yes? Oh, I'm sorry. Is something wrong? Frank Reeve. The slippery road. What's happened to Frank? And that motorcycle. We were coming around a bend. He didn't see us. Is he hurt? No. Then he's dead. Yes. He left complete notes for the operation. Oh, Frank. Peter. June. I'm here, darling. We'll be at the hospital soon. Where's Frank? June, look at me. Where is he? He... He's gone ahead. He's had an accident. Hasn't he, June? Yes. He's dead. Yes, he... he's dead. Frank. Injection nurse. Well, squadron leader, you're looking fine. Surgery ready. Uh, June. See you soon, Peter. Yeah, I think so. I-, I think I found someone to take my case, June. How are you, squadron leader? Uh, oh, oh, fine, Doc. Like to smell this? Sure, I think so. You just inhale. Breathe easily. 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 Count to ten. One, two, three, four. Medical section report at desk three. Medical section report at desk three. Doctor, Doctor Rie. Yes. Allow me to introduce myself. Conductor seventy-one in person. Oh ho. Ah ha. So we. Oui. Ah. You're the chap I've been fighting. And how is dear Peter? Oh, he has a chance. Uh, perhaps. Now, if I may have the pleasure, several people are waiting to meet you. Come along. All right. It's a rather pleasant place here, isn't it? It is uh, heaven. <laughs> now, may I present flying officer Bob to Hoopshaw? What ho, Doc? Bob. Peter Sparks. Right. Peter's in trouble, isn't he? Yes, I should say he is. Have you been waiting for him? Thought I might be able to help. Ruddy good wireless operator, you know. Well, I'm afraid he can't use a wireless operator, Bob, but he might have need for a ruddy good friend. Righto. I'll be waiting. And you, Dr. Reeves, uh, the officer in charge. Dr. Reeve, you're familiar with the case of squadron leader Peter Carter? Yes, rather. Splendid. For he's chosen you to be his counsel. Well, you know, I rather hoped you would. You accept? I do. Then I'm afraid you must plead his case extemporaneously. The trial begins in half an hour. Sidereal time, of course. Well, Peter, here's where we find out. Appeal sits to consider the case of Department of Records versus Squadron Leader Peter Carter of the Royal Air Force. 
Members of the jury, you know your duty. The counsel for the prosecution, Mr. Abraham Jones, will take his place. Very well, Your Honor. The counsel for the defense, Dr. Frank Reeve, will take his place. Very well, my lad. I call upon the prosecution to open the case. <clears throat> Your Honor, members of the jury, in the course of human events, it inevitably becomes necessary to die. This is an experience which we have all shared. An experience which Peter Carter, an Englishman, <laughs> refuses to accept on the grounds that one, a mistake has been made, and two, because of that mistake, he has fallen in love as a result of a borrowed 36 hours, borrowed from eternity. Well, lad, I object to the word borrowed used by the honored consul. My client borrowed nothing. He was given 36 hours, and they were his and his alone to do with as he saw fit. And this Englishman saw fit to profess a love for an American girl, a girl, I say, from Boston. Why stress their nationalities? Very important, sir, very important. Nationality can have no standing in heaven. 143 million Americans, sir, will be pained to hear you say that. <laughs> Knowing the importunate nature of English airmen and the sweet, flower-like character of American womankind, I cannot but think that a tragedy is in the brewing. And on what grounds do you make this prediction? On the grounds of experience. I have watched wars and troops and infatuations from this most excellent vantage point. And of the myriad meetings of souls, how many gave rise to love, to true love? Not one in 5,000. There, then, is my case. The 5,000th. To be proven, sir. I call up Flying Officer Robert Tubshaw to the stand. Right, old doc. Fire away. You were associated with the defendant for how long? Three years. His fox. In that time, would you say that he knew many women? Oh, I'd say many years the word for it. There was one at Bourne, Mark. Uh, yes, uh, particulars are not necessary. <laughs> Would you say that Peter Carter was rather, well, a rake? A smasher. Gentlemen of the jury, need I say more? Here lies the proof of British inconstancy and subterfuge. Does it? Well, then I ask Flying Officer Trubshaw, to your knowledge, did Peter Carter at any time or under any conditions express the sentiment of love to any woman living or dead? Yes. I rest my case, Your Honor. You rest it too easily, Mr. Jones. Flying Officer Trubshaw, who was this woman? His mother, sir. <laughs> Anyone else? No, sir. Except June, of course. She must be a proper corker. Thank you. That'll do. Malad, gentlemen of the jury, the prosecution questions a love that has been expressed only once and that has never been counterfeited, never imitated. Here are two people who would never have met but for a mistake higher up. You witness them penalized for the most natural and simple thing in the world. They fell in love. Here are devotion and truth and friendship. The absence of these qualities is even now ripping the world like a knife. They are its only hope. And so they must be nurtured. Let love live in the persons of squadron leader Peter Carter and his June. That is my case. And I deny it. Should the vibrant humor of a young American girl be stifled in the pages of Punch? Should she be condemned to England's warm drinks, cold rooms, and the horrors of the British Broadcasting Corporation? I say no. <laughs> Your Honor, I beg permission to call upon two more witnesses. As you wish, Dr. Reeve. Then I call Peter and June. You ask the impossible, sir. Impossible? Do I hear such a word on the lips of an American? You flatter me, sir. You have always flattered yourself, sir. But uh, not without some cause. My witness will be heard, Your Honor. The stairway will descend to the operating room of squadron leader Peter Carter. That sponge, nurse. Suction. His pulse is slowing. We'll have to work a little faster. Suction. There is no need to deny ourselves a dimension of time. The operation will Plan. continue. 
I call squadron leader oh, no, no. Peter Carter. Uh, Hello, Hello, Frank. Hello, Peter. How's my operation no. going? Fine. Looks like a success. Well, thanks to you. And I suppose this handsome-looking gentleman is Mr. Abraham Jones? You know me, oh, sir? Who could mistake you, sir? Such charm could no. be bred only in Boston. <laughs> and are these the type of compliments you employed on the American lady? You cannot compliment loveliness, Mr. Jones, but can only recognize it. You claim to love her? I do love her. Can you prove it? Can a starving man prove he's hungry except by eating? Give me 50 years and I'll prove it. Good show, Peter. Hit him again. <laughs> Defense counsel will not prompt the witness. Squadron leader Carter, would you die for this woman? Yes, but I'd a lot rather live for her. <laughs> Your witness, Dr. Reeve. No questions. Then I'll call the woman in the case to the witness stand. Peter... Oh, Peter, darling. Take my hand, John. Child, you wouldn't lie to a fellow Bostonian, would you? I love Peter. When did you meet him? A few days ago. And you call this love? I can call it nothing else, unless you wish to be lied to by a Bostonian. Would you be willing to die for him? Yes. Would you take his place in the balance sheet? Yes. No, no, don't believe her. Stand aside, sir. Prosecution has no right to ask anything. Peter think... Carter, you stand before the high court Oh, of heaven... shut up! <laughs> oh, dare you This is contempt Do you realize, sir That you forfeited any chance Of winning your case All right Take me, but you're not getting June Your Honor Members of the jury As even a Bostonian must admit He really does love her Your witness, Dr. Reeve June Do you trust me? Of course I do, Frank Well, then do as I say You must take Peter's place In the other world Frank, are you out of your mind? Will you stay out of this, Peter? June, if you really love him, step onto the staircase with us. The stairway to heaven. Well, he's crazy, June. Don't listen. To... It's the only way, June. I love you, Peter. I'm ready, Frank. And step to my side. Goodbye, Peter. No, June. Take care, Dr. Reeve. Once the stairway moves in the whole universe, nothing is stronger than the law. We're moving, June. Goodbye, darling. June. June, come back. Nothing stronger than the law. Frank, it's... it's stopped. The stairway has stopped. June! Yes, Mr. Jones. Nothing is stronger than law in the universe. But on Earth, nothing is stronger than love. June, he's waiting for you. Oh, Peter. My darling. My darling, I almost lost you. My lad, my case rests. And mine is conceded. The jury has just signified its verdict as unanimous. Appeal granted. I'm allowed to live and to love. We've won, Peter. There now remains the new date on squadron leader Carter's pile. It is written on this document. Will both counsels approve it? Oh, yes, my lad. Um, hmm. Yes, that's very generous. Uh, isn't it a little too generous, Your Honor? Oh, come along, Mr. Jones. Back up the stairway. I'm going to try to convert you into an Englishman. Sir, once a man has trod the soil of Boston... It's over, June. It's just beginning, Peter. I'll see you later, darling. After the operation. Yes. What a great and wonderful thing it'll be to be alive. Thank you, Robert Cummings and Julia Adams for a delightful performance. Our stars will return in just a moment. Next week, the Screen Directors Playhouse will present for the first time on the air, Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson in their original roles. Now, here again is the president of the Screen Directors Guild, George Sidney, with tonight's stars, Robert Cummings and Julia Adams. Julia, Bob, 
You know, we're going to send a recording of your wonderful performance to the directors in England. Oh, I'm afraid we couldn't uh, quite do with sound, George, what they did with photography in Stairway to Heaven. What a completely beautiful motion picture it was. Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger have a habit of creating completely beautiful motion pictures. As you well remember, Black Narcissus, The Red Shoes. Yes, Hollywood directors owe them a very deep bow of respect. <laughs> you know, if we had that little Frenchman around to stop the clock, we could uh, praise them from here to... Uh, to uh... I think eternity is a word, Bob. Yeah, a but word. since in this oh-so-mortal world, time has a habit of running out. Thanks for having us, George. It's been... Uh... I think uh, heavenly is the word, Julia. <laughs> Good night, George, everyone. Mm. Good night, Bob. Good night, Julia. Stairway to Heaven, a J. Arthur Rank production, was presented through the courtesy of Universal International Pictures, who will soon release The Iron Man, starring Jeff Chandler, Stephen McNally, and Evelyn Keyes. Robert Cummings will soon be seen in the Columbia picture Small Wonder with Barbara Hale. Julia Adams can now be seen in Bright Victory, a Universal International picture co-starring Arthur Kennedy and Peggy Dow. George Sidney appears through the courtesy of Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer, producers of the Technicolor film Showboat which was directed by Mr. Sidney. Included in tonight's cast were Tony Barrett, Ben Wright, Norma Varden, Don Morrison, Rye Billsbury, Jerry Hausner, and Ramsey Hill. The theremin was played by Dr. Samuel Hoffman. Stairway to Heaven was adapted for radio by Richard Allen Simmons from the original screenplay by Michael Powell and Emmerich Pressburger. Green Director's Playhouse is under the production supervision of Howard Wiley and is directed by Bill Karn. Portions of tonight's broadcast were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week when the Screen Director's Playhouse presents, for the first time on the air, Caged, starring Eleanor Parker with Hope Emerson in their original roles and guest screen director George Sidney. <laughs> Listen again next week to Screen Director's Playhouse, one of the weekly features on NBC's all-star festival of comedy, music, mystery, and drama. Listen tomorrow evening for Mr. Keene, Tracer of Lost Persons, the Friday night feature of the all-star festival. Disaster has struck again, in greater force than has been seen in many a year. The floodwaters rampaging through Kansas, Missouri, Oklahoma, and Illinois have overrun cities, towns, and villages, leaving thousands homeless in need of food, clothing, shelter, and medical care. The American Red Cross already is taking care of more than 17,000 persons in its shelters and feeding more than 42,000 persons a day. And there is still the great job of rehabilitation ahead. Families driven from their homes must be assisted in returning to normal living, homes to be rebuilt or refurnished, equipment to be replaced, Long-term medical care to be given for those who cannot help themselves. These are jobs that take money, a lot of money, more than the Red Cross can provide from its present resources. Your help is needed. Give generously for your friends, your neighbors, your fellow citizens across the street and across the nation. Tomorrow, hear Backstage Wife on NBC.